tuned into the true frequency. Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. When you finally boil it all down, magic is imagination. We, we, we are moving into an age of manifestation. Things become actually less material, more ethereal. The, the, the golden dawn is when we awaken to this new, new, new station of life. What you think becomes real quicker. Regain our imagination, regain our inner child, and let that inner child out, 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 out. My name is Frank Castle, founding member of the music group High Slick and New York City Neo Shaman. After a serious injury sidelined my career in 2013, I decided to set out on an adventure to search for myself with the help of the plant medicine, Ayahuasca. What I discovered waiting for me was something I could have never prepared for. It was time for me to become something more, someone more. It was time I became fearless. Space and time When the light starts to shine Inside your third eye You will wake to the knowledge That you never die What is up everyone? I'm Frank Castle Your Sorcerer Supreme of Saturday nights Right here on TruthFrequencyRadio.com And to my right <laughs> The lovely Etherical translator my very own Paula Milo. Hey, hey, everyone. Before we get the show started, I'd like to give my shout outs to Chris and Cherie. Love you guys so much. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be here doing this. So thank you so much. And for all of you that enjoy tonight's show and everybody else's show that you've been listening to because we have the greatest lineups ever, don't forget to sign up. Get the app, sign up, listen to back issues, back shows. Get a subscription. Get in there. Get ready. Mm-hmm. Get the gnosis. Bring the raw <laughs> consciousness to the forefront. Hi, chat room folks. <laughs> What's up, everybody in the chat room? I got marbles in my mouth this evening. Um, yeah, sign up to TFR and uh, and check out all the great hosts. And if you like any of the music tonight, H E I S T C L I C K, that's Heist Click. You could also find me there on Twitter. I forget to say that every time. You know, I did this search on my Twitter to see if you can find out how many fake followers you have. I had like 4,000 fake followers. And I just don't want to go in and just click each one because it's just way too many. You got to pay the service and then go and do that. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll just start a new one. Who knows? I want to keep my heist click stuff, though, because as you know, as you know, the heist, it's in everything. <laughs> I was checking out Egyptian, uh, uh, Egyptian words and stuff. And what they pronounce as heist is of the goddess Isis. Mm-hmm. I say that a bunch because I have to remind people that before it was the terrorist organization, <laughs> it was the goddess of love. <laughs> and will always be. One of the things we've <clears throat> talked about from the very beginning was the magic behind love itself. Right? So I go meet Isis for the first time, whether the archetype comes to life within me and, and shines. And when I get there, I notice that she's weak. She's, she's hurting yep. and she's small. I go, what, what happened to her? She was in the shape of a scarab beetle. And I said, um, why, why did you let this happen to her? And it was explained to me, just turn around and take a look. And the mass consciousness of the planet because of the takeover of the language when they were screaming, get, you know, get rid of ISIS, the terrorist organization, kill ISIS, kill ISIS, yeah. kill, ISIS kill ISIS. That's really going to her. Kill love. Now, I know that sounds weird, but we are in Bizarro World. So if it's not weird enough, there's another one. I'm throwing a nice left hook at you. When you, you know how they tell you not to hate on your enemy? Because in the language, it's put in there as the hate's going out to certain beings that you're angry at even though your intent is behind it the words and the language are mixed 
So other things are occurring that you're not even aware of. So the hate is kind of flying in multiple directions and you're most of the time taking away from yourself. Most of the time, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, there are things that just you will hate. I mean, it's just the way it is where we are human. We're having a human experience. So you're going to have it. And it's it, part of the battle is dealing with these rages of emotions. The only way to really truly get control is to experience the actual emotion itself. Let it drive that nail into you and then sit back and try to understand it instead of reacting to it. Right. You know, there's multiple kinds of versions of the observer, but the kind of observer, when I talk, it's the, the old traditional. You take a look, you check it out, then you react to it after you've taken your full look at it. What did I do growing up? Just react. You make me angry, smash. Hulk, right. smash. Right. What does Hulk eventually have to do? Because of how strong he is. He has to tone it down a lot. <laughs> Move from city to city. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want your kind here. Hero, <laughs> we don't like your green kind up in this place. But um, but yeah, that's what eventually you have to do is you got to tone it down and put it into perspective a little bit. And don't react. Yeah. You know, I see something I don't like. Right. You, you, if, if you're not rescuing someone or kind of saving the day or just inserting in the moment and it's totally necessary. Slow your roll. Slow your roll. <laughs> Mind your own bizwack sometimes. And then other times don't. Right. That's that's how this is done. Remember, we're all sharing this space, be it artificial, be it a program, be it whatever it is. We're sharing it. And each one of us is a creator and has that ability, has every ability we discuss on the show. If you're a G, I've been talking about Jesus lately. Um, I'm still on the line with him, even though they've told me, well, he ain't here. It's this other guy. And I'm like, that's cool. But Space Jesus is pretty dope. Space Jesus. And Space Jesus says. And I'm not I'm not making fun of nothing. The guy comes out of a portal. Look at all the paintings and pictures from just type in Jesus pictures or something and, and look on Google that constantly he's coming out of this cloud in the sky. Right. But the, the cloud echoes back into this weird spiral. Bingo. Christ is flying through the portal. <laughs> Silver surface style. Right now, I know a lot of people. I don't even want to get into that just yet, but. We're at the, what's today, the 30th. Today was the last rapture day that you're getting, according to the way they've been transcribing the Bible verses. And I've been trying to let people know. These Bible verses have been rewritten over time to fit the narrative of the villains that want to control your lives. I have to be like super specific. The 1%, the artificial intelligence, those characters at the top, those beings that would have you on your knees as cattle, know this. And those are the ones rewriting it. So that you're always guessing and you're always wondering, oh, it's the September 25th and the 23rd and the, the stars are going to align correctly. And what happens? What has always happened? Oh, at least in our lifetime, what has happened on all those major dates? Paula, can you please check behind door number one? What has happened? Not much. No, oh, exactly. <laughs> it's very. Uh, the world is not going to end that easily. That quickly. Not in our lifetime. Not like that. The metaphors are, and let's get back to space Jesus. Yeah. You can do what I can do. That's what space Jesus teaches, right? He's like, anything I do, you can do. And I, I didn't want to get into this, but yet, but the kingdom of God. Well, it's pushing you in that direction. So. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So the kingdom of God is uh, with inside of you. Okay. So. You hold on to that belief structure and the belief system, mm -hmm. but you're not seeing it. Like I was in a chat room with these guys. I just jumped in on some guy's post and I'm like, so you guys believe you're actually going to be raptured off this planet? Like what, what parts of the Bible? And I, cause I know they're going to, if I, if I act nasty with them and go dummies, this isn't what's happening. I'm doing it all wrong. Right. Even though it, it sets a anger off in me as well, but the anger's not really at them because they're, they're me. That's me. Those are all confused versions of me. But in that confusion, there's paths to the truth in that. So who am I to ever say? Right. But I'm curious. You believe that this is what's going to happen. And I got back a slew of the, what they call evidence mm -hmm. that the dates had already passed. And the guy even said to me, well, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, I guess we'll be back to work studying the Bible again on Monday. And right. I said, well, you better get studying, bro. Right. 
and you better stop reading that one. Like you already know the story, you know the parables, but what are you waiting for? He's waiting for Christ on a cloud. He said he's coming, he's gonna come and get us. Now, this post had more comments and more likes than any combined with me, Chris Geo, Ra, everyone on Saturday nights, all mixed into one. More from this one guy to saying like this, the 30th, but he was sure that it was gonna happen. And people were in there jumping on me for asking the question. And I said, well, Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you. Now they would leave that part in as just a little snippet, right? But then all the other parts to expect him, to expect him. It's not kind of cool if, I mean, do you really think a guy's gonna come in on a, on a, on a cloud or a spaceship or a portal and start rescuing people? We don't know. We don't know. You don't know. We don't know. I don't know. But let, let's be honest. What resonates with us that we're going to have to save ourselves or that over the course of the next, I don't know, a couple of years, someone's coming and they're going to come with all their friends to save us. I don't think that's any of that is going to happen in our lifetime. And I think even what the Pleiadians try to teach us, you know, uh, the Pleiades are so far away that one, I think one day is like 50 years or 55 years. So when they come back, to give us information about the future and what we're doing wrong and what needs to be corrected. I don't think the correction is going to take place in our lifetime, this lifetime. Right. See, they that's, tell you things like no opinion. one knows the place, no one knows the time, no one knows the date. Right. So, that's but then opinion. here's all this other stuff. So you go right. chasing yeah. your tail down rabbit holes to try to figure out when this is going to happen. Right. When is it all going to end? Would you guys should go back and check King James before he was King James, before he had the Bible. And then what they said, then they, they stole all the Gnostic texts. They burnt them and destroyed all them things. Right. So how many times was it changed and manipulated before it got to you? And the fact that you have now original sin and must be blessed by having water poured on the child and brought through these really weird rituals where you have to, you know, eat my body and drink my blood. What's going on guys. And I asked this, I'm being serious. Cause I know some people who listen to the show are like, Jesus is the way. And I'm like, all right, fine. Jesus can be the way if for you, not for anyone else, for you and those of your ilk of your kind that believe that maybe I'm not saying it can't be. I said, so this is what I said. The Christ is within you mm -hmm. and the temple of God lies within you. That's exactly what Christ said, according to the Bible. I grew up Christian and it was beaten into my face and they couldn't even understand that. Right. They were like, no, 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 no. Check it out. You got to look here at Matthews, whatever, or at Luke, this, that. And I'm like, yeah, and you were wrong every time. And I don't I'm not even hear calling you wrong. I'm saying Maybe you guys should loosen up on your belief system because due to the post, you could tell the guys like, wow, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, we're kind of, right. you know, yeah, you're right. If we drank the Kool-Aid thinking hell bop was going to save us, we'd all be dead and nothing would have happened. Life goes on. If, 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 if a stranger comes out of a vehicle, let's not be goofy for a second. Let's just kind of take this seriously. You get news reports of the sky opening and ships landing and a guy steps out and says, I am Jesus. He just kind of. Y'all going to just follow him blindly? Like, you do realize that if you believe in ETs and all that, it could be, if you believe in Project Blue Bean or that harp can dictate what you see in your mind and you hear the voice of God, how could you trust anything? You can't trust your neighbor. You can't trust family members sometimes. You can't trust your dog not to eat something off the counter. And you're going to just trust somebody that lands, that comes out of the sky and says, come with me. You do realize we're in an infinite universe and you're, you are the creator. Right. And if Jesus is running around going, man, you could do what, what we have to do. Where are the parts where Jesus was saying something like, yeah, exactly. Second coming. It's the alien Christ. And then they're going to tell you all this other stuff. See how they bend the Christ. Um, you know, first they hide it. They, they tell you, oh, no, it's Christ. Yes. Yeah, oh, it's Christ. It's Jesus Christ, though. See, you can't have your salvation with Christ. See, it's always separate with the Christ unless you go to Jesus or through the church to get that. And I'm like, well, your body's the temple and your body's the church. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what they meant. They didn't mean this. This is how they hide it from you, though. Yep. 
so the whole time, I, I think I, I shouted something the other day in the house. I didn't even realize, like, oh, the answer was in what I just said, and it was hidden in the old religion and stuff. The way they taught us was it was separate of us, and we had to obtain it somehow. We had to go because we were born bad, and, and I'm not – I can only speak from this structure because um, this is where I was – this is where I was raised. Yep. You know, Oh, would you like to take kids? No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. You finished making your point. <laughs> right. So it worries me. And for the last, Oh God, thousands of years, me and Nicholas talk about this. He, he, he gave me some statement when he came out of his experience. And I said, you, you realize 200 years ago, if you said that to me, we'd hang you outside. We taste set you on fire while hanging you and trying to drown you in water. Mm -hmm. And then we would take your lineage and set them on fire and watch them burn because God knows, lowercase g, we don't want them back in the mix, right? Stepping out of the box is scary because we have all this stuff in our DNA that reminds us, hey, man, you open your mouth, the brick's getting thrown. Yep. Well, the brick, you can't, there's not enough hands to throw the bricks if a bunch of us stand up and say, no more brick throwing, please. <laughs> Just stop throwing bricks. Stop being a dummy. It's 2017. Do you see Christ coming in off his sky sled, picking people up? Huh? And that's because you're the Christ. This is what I was getting at, right? So yeah, if they, not, not, if they yeah. tossed it and turned it and made it a religion that was twisted because they, let's say the religion prior to that, let's just give you a little basis, was good. The gnosis was good. And it led to this good thing. And then it turned into a religion. Mm -hmm. And then it got flipped and manipulated and then went bizarro world on us. Yay, nay? But that's what happened, right? I don't know. Is that what happened? What does your gnosis tell you? Everyone, look, I, I am a Catholic. I am the worst Catholic in the world. I'm not a practicing Catholic. But I do believe the Christ consciousness. And I think that people need something to believe in and the easiest way to get there is through religion and if that's how you originally got there and it brought you to where you are now then be thankful for that do you know what i mean i do you know you learned a lot about faith in the last two years three years you know you you can have a very strong faith it doesn't mean you have to have a very strong belief in religion but you have to believe that there's something higher than yourself but that thing higher than yourself is more you. It is you, but it takes a lifetime for you to realize that it's you. Some people are not as blessed as you are to have this understanding. Some people will. Well, that's why we're here doing the show. Right. We're doing the best we can. Right. As in, if everybody <clears throat> takes the self responsibility to do the best they can, see, we're not talking at you like if we were here. This would be like an open conversation. Exactly. Yeah. If you were here, we'd just tell you the stories the room, and. You know, we'd Going back before, but this is, made really good coffee tonight. <laughs> this is how we take the information and disseminate it. We find out the truth um, from from the fiction. All right, I know Nick's in the room. Uh, eating the body symbolizes eating the psychedelic mushrooms, and the blood drinking symbolizes drinking the psychoactive water dew that collects. All right, from all right, listen, that is the truth, absolutely the truth. But when you have demonic entities that have assimilated the church right and flipped it on its head it becomes a ritual of like um preparation of taking on this other entity this other being that you're not and you're going to take this into your body right so uh, originally it was hide that knowledge from them by just saying this but then within that think about the blood rituals the sex rituals the demonic artwork that's everywhere it's like littered in there mixed with the artificial intelligence and i think chris and i agree on this like really a lot that a lot of these religions are just uh the way they've been twisted even if there was some organic beings that were just evil running around doing it other than human beings that it's really a tentacle of the ai and the program itself trying to get you to go down that route where it could control you and make it an external and source. it happens very easily very it easily happens very easily it's like dangling a carrot that's how easily it happens you don't even know it's happening you're drinking that kool-aid right and you know it's funny one that of these you shouldn't want absolutely and one of these beings whatever being could cause a minor miracle absolutely and then create a shift towards itself chaos and confusion 
That's its job. But, but leads it directly, uh, leads all path to Oz directly to itself yeah. from any tentacle. That's why when you hear the, these religions, you may go, your God is horrible and your God is horrible. But they, they're all basically the same thing. Yeah, I mean, you live by the a stories are the set same. of rules to be a better person and be good to your environment and good to other people. We get that. But... Don't kill people, and you know, and well, then we, we, and yeah. then they, then you get your religions that are like, no, kill people, which is not. No, there's no religion that say kill people. Yeah, well, you can kill people if they're homosexual. You can kill people oh, well, if they if they don't listen, or you know, you could beat a woman with a stick if it's the size of your thumb. How about that one? You like that rule? <laughs> I never huh? heard of that. <laughs> I think you made the that theoretical up. translator, you like that one, huh? <laughs> Two hundred years ago, <laughs> you'd be like. No, Frank, I don't think that's good. And I pull it out and go, yeah, don't let me have to talk to you live on air with let, this stick. Let, let's not get to There'll be no beating with a stick. I don't care if it's the size of your thumb. Right. See, so it's messed up. It's just there is a system of control. Because I would never do anything like that. But 200 years ago. Who knows? Whoever you were. <laughs> whoever you were then might have just picking it up and went for it and been like, no, you know. But this is how you control and dominate. That's nice. I'm just making a point, know, you know, know. and uh, you know, so the joke will be on us, but to make the, to make the important point that anything that promotes that junk is just that junk, right? It's trying to keep you in line. So you don't do something they don't want you to do. But that's what the soul is about. Really trying just to siphon through all the information we're given and pick and choose the information we need to keep us moving forward. Because it has to be like change. It has to be constant change. You have to be moving forward. One of the things you should always look to is, all right, a lot of people get comfy. Like, oh, this will never change. I love it. Oh, I get comfortable. But, I get comfortable. Yeah, but I then if you don't do anything as. Yeah, if you get complacent, I, I, I have my. Right. So routine. horrible routines <laughs> yeah. form in two weeks. Yeah. Right. So all these routines can just, that's how quick, boom, you're done. You're not moving. You're stagnant in the water. We are not meant to take a boat out into um, the moving current. And I'm, this is a metaphor for yeah, the energy. Don't of go the, against the current. And then try to like go the other way or, or put an anchor down while the waves are crashing right there and like passing us by. Right. You don't anchor off in the, in the corner where the water's just rushing yeah. up on that no, wall. You go with the flow. That's why. Yeah. You, you go, go. You with have the flow. to. Adapt. That's all that means. Adapt. We're built for that, though. We are built for that. That's and why the body we... needs it. Because if you resist all of that energy, that's how you get sick. You, you, you become very ill. You take it all in and you push it down and you push it down. <laughs> One of the things we witness here is that when you're too complacent and then people come and drink ayahuasca and they think they're on the path for the most part, and they are, you know. Oh, but yeah. In everyone terms who of, comes, or anyone who makes it through the door is, is the gunk amount. Oh, yeah, through. the layers that have to come off. Yeah, so for as enlightened as you are absolutely in this world. And well, it's the programming. It's it's what you were taught when you were a kid and how you were taught to grow up and how you feel about sex and how you feel about love and how you feel about marriage and children and, you know, all these, all these things. And, you know, if you say the wrong thing, you offend a lot of people. So it's. It's years and years of programming and 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 belief systems. Some of them not even yours. And, and you're like, I'm woke. Yeah. And I've seen the light. Like, but I, that has to come off. No, no, All I know absolutely. Gunk has to. I come challenge off. people. Say, well, that's the stuff I see during meditation. And I'm like, well, really? Wait, wait, wait. Out. I go when it when I like the DMT world and stuff. I say, oh, that's what you see under meditation. That's where you reach because then you you know you far surpassed. Um, the masters in this world by jumping to that and they're like no that's that's how it is for me all the time I swear I'm like really then how come you're living in a shack how come you didn't finish the last project you did how come you it's yeah. not clicking somewhere because the creator's just sitting there stagnant but they think they're in like hold on I'm not snapping on anyone no, you're then not, you, no, no, you no, I, I invite I you in and say hey try this just like i I've discussed this openly with people that have, I'm a master at this, I'm a master at that. Yeah, you witness this, your life has changed, but I still see you sitting there the way you are. Try this. And then right. the lifetimes, right. the muck, the, the muck removal the service yeah. 
starts and they go, oh, you, you, you the don't slide. reach, you don't, you don't reach that it. during, during meditation. That's, that's a load of crap. You, you meditate for 4,000 years and not get what you had in those last 15 seconds. And I'm like, the stuff that we're doing though, is the tool to evolve mm -hmm. that which was, is, is in us that have not been used properly. Right. And is now getting that workout in. Right. Right. So you can take 40 lifetimes in one session and you could at least crush it up a little bit and go, okay, there's been a whole bunch of lifetimes. I'm loved. I'm loved. And I'm that's repeat, okay. Yeah, Repeating the same mistake. You know, <clears> or at mind. least, yeah. at least, you know, <clears throat> my mother needs me mm -hmm. or my father needs me or my kid needs me. It, this, this is too important. This is too big. That's going on. And then the layer gets stripped again. Right. And you go, oh, you reach that door in meditation. You'd have done all this work already. You, you see what I'm trying to say, the enlightened ones, the ones that go around like gurus and saying, no, I got it. I got this. I got that. I got this. I got that. And you witness them and they're just babbling it out of their mouth. They're not actually, there's no, there's no bread and butter to it. No substance. No, you realize there's no, yeah, they're not really, they're just claiming enlightenment because they sit there and meditate with music because they play the drums for a little bit. And they boom, 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 boom. See, but, um, but that could work for them. Right. But then it becomes that religious aspect where they become oh, like i'm enlightened and you're not you see you there's this weird separation that goes on like well listen right. if you don't at least put in 60 hours a week to do this you're never going to let it happen and i'm like let me tell you something son i'm from the bronx this is how we do it and this is how aya allows us to do it here right and then bang right in and what you thought you had as being woke you realize you weren't even you were still snoring we're not gonna lose anything. We're dragging it back to the strong densities of three and four D tonight. I'm so happy to be back on air this great Saturday night. Uh, wear your protection from deception, and we love you very, very much. <laughs>Fearless.com. Go there, put your email in, sign up for the big release date. It's coming up this month. <clears throat> you know, we like to think that we can click our heels together three times and have it done. But what we put together with Team Fearless, with the Fearless Tribe, we, um, we all came together and we're creating this wonderful network of artists and We'll have some musicians and we'll have character descriptions and the blog for the journeys and the journals of what's happening and how to connect us, where to find us. Uh, kind of like the bat phone, right? It just yeah, kind of rings, cool. you pick it up, you know, you go to one place, boom, you take a look, you go, oh, I have a couple of questions about, and then you ask your question and then you look on the site and see if there's the answer right there because that's how I'm setting this up. <laughs> Our team is fantastic. If you have any artwork that you'd like us to uh, check out, perhaps get out there to the world, put on a T-shirt, a hat, <coughs> bless you. Excuse me, thank you. Uh, then send it to the real Frank Castle at Gmail. Also, check me out on YouTube, Frank Castle Fearless. You get the first uh, twenty-six episodes. Because we're rocking and rolling when it comes to this. And I just wanted to give a shout out to every one of the artists that's been working there. These guys put in their time and effort. And when you put in that kind of work, you get the job done. And uh, it's not really work when it's what you love. And this is what we're doing. We're creating. 
we're creating the place where you can go to create and make some money because you need to live. You need some kind of income on this planet to survive. Money is an energy exchange. Yes. So the paper that you look down at and hold in your hand and you're like, this is real. It's just energy because we, we, you know, that's really just paper, but yet you'll kill for it. You'll rob for it. You do horrible things for or it. Or you'll give it away. Or you'll just throw it up in the air and be sick and tired of it. It's an energy exchange. Remember that. Remember that when you walk into a room, every room, when you walk through the doorway, the arches, that that's a portal into right. another area. Sometimes, especially not in your house, in other places, it's someone else's domain, right? So you go to someone's house, you ring the doorbell, they answer the door, hello, they greet you, you greet them, you wipe your feet, you come in, you take your shoes off perhaps, you say thank you, they offer you something to drink, right? Very respectful. Well, what about when you walk into a place and you just start acting a fool? But kind of like what they say, don't act like this in a church ever because God will see you and kind of smite you. There is something to that when you're in a, an area and you want something done and you walk in rude and it, it's like a new doorway, a new portal into this new area and you come in and you're already angry and right. just you're not feeling right. And you want to just lash out. I'm just, this is an example. That's what you're getting back. You're getting you, back what you're, you're, you're putting out. That's like me coming into your house and kicking my shoes on your couch and then grabbing your wife by the hiney and going, hey, what's up? I'm here for dinner. Right? Like you can't do stuff like that. That's not what you do in someone's house. Just kind of keep that in mind when you enter places like motor vehicle and stuff. When you enter... Um, certain atmospheres we tend to forget that yeah, right? you have to you have to adapt to the energy right and, if uh, there's an overall an overarching um let me see some like a being that comes out when this is unlocked that comes out within the energy and he's running or it's running the area whether it's good or bad or this or that if you walk in there with a certain intent it senses that and then your that vibe goes back to you right right so if you're rude and acting stupid at the like a concert you start throwing beer on people you're going to get chucked out and you're going to get beer thrown on you yeah you, you you get you what you put out is what you receive because the energy is a frequency and anything that's on the same frequency is going to find you so if you're giving negativity out you're going to get ne negativity back and i'm not saying that you know if you're nice all the time people are going to be nice to you all the time because that's not that's not realistic, but y you make the decision. You've already made the decision on how the day is going to go by the way you woke up. So if you say, you know, today I'm going to do something different than I did yesterday and I'm going to keep moving <coughs> forward, then you're, you're, you're greeting the day with hope instead of fear. You know, anytime you're coming from a place of fear, you've already lost. You're already behind. So you can swing the fear. You can swing the fear slightly, but then try to swing it towards faith. Because if you're approaching anything with faith or with hope, you're much better. You're in a much better situation than if you approach it from fear. Nothing good comes out of being fearful. Think of it as you're already working with neg <coughs> Excuse me, with negative numbers. If, uh, if you come out with fear, right. you know, but being afraid a little bit is healthy. Oh, it is healthy. Yes. <clears throat> it's your body's natural reaction to things in the environment, things in your DNA. So if you're on a surfboard and you're, you know, you're worried because you got bit by a shark once or there were sharks in the water, you're like, oh, there's sharks in the water, but the really good surfers, right? I mean, I, I don't even know if this is randomness of them getting hit on the surfboard by the shark, but by them not being afraid, but understanding that it's there and have a healthy respect for the ocean, they go and conquer their fear, then conquer the wave, right. win the championship, you know, take the cheerleader home. Like this is, it just manifests forward. Yeah. Pushing forward. And that's all by pushing out fear, which is on my list of tonight. 
just discussion. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, are you manifesting? What are you manifesting? How are you manifesting? Did the shift happen? Did it occur already? Because the manifestations are happening faster. I can only speak for what I see and for what I experience. And I've seen things happen at such a fast rate of reply that I started watching my mouth. Yeah, because it's coming too quickly now. The old me would um, shout out, you know, whatever obscenity or, or, hey, where's my this? Or where's my that? I deserve this. And I'm not going to stand for that. Um, you know, where is this of mine? And boom, it happened. But when you do it with anger... It comes through dirty, right? The reply comes through a little crappy. It's like because you put it out there like that. And I was explaining this to uh, my brother today. Uh, he needs to, he's going to be at Comic-Con. And he has the Red Cup review that he does, which is the Mezco toy reviews, right? So <laughs> I'm like, well, what do you need? And he's like, well, everything's always behind. I'm like, I, I'm always a day late and a dollar short. And he curses a lot like I do sometimes. And he's like, you don't understand. I get up. It's already 10 days late. And I'm like, all right, well, your complaints are warranted for one moment. Now, why are you always saying things like. Always. Why are you always saying things like always? I'm always I'm always a day late. You're telling the universe, make me a day late. Make me 10 days behind because yeah, I'm that's what you're worried. I'm so worried. Listen to that word. Worry. Worry. It brings you back down from a high vibration and traps you into a lower vibration because you're worried. You got to let go of that word. Being concerned, being a little nervous is fine. But when you sit there and go, I wonder, 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 how, 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 if I only had this one thing, the whole thing would work out. No, it right. wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. The next step wouldn't work because you're not believing in anything and putting it over there on someone, someone else. I'm like, look, you want to manifest, first of all, I said, you got to learn how to do the programs for the videos yourself, period. Just like we had to learn everything that we had to do here, but then go to true frequency and attach right. through their That's website. Right, yeah. Like I got to have everything here set perfect, then go there. Or set there's perfect. no show. Right. We I can't have, this, we do this or there's no show. Right. I can't have someone else come in and go, Hey, you want me to do this for you? Whatever. And then if I show up and it's not right, Whose fault is it? It's not mine. Right. It's not now we're just displacing blame and all kinds and anger, of nonsense. So it's not necessary. You learn to do what you have to do. Sergio, my, my partner, um, uh, Ryan from the Bird Tribe he says to me, uh, "I am. We are." He says, "I'm going to record you talking about the beings and your interactions with the different characters, and then I'll do a write up, or we'll have these other guys do the write up that, that that are helping with the website." And I said, "You know, I appreciate that." He's like, "Because you're so busy and this and that." And I'm like, "Listen, Serge, I want in on my own stuff. No, nobody should have to do that but me because." The story doesn't come out correct unless I throw it out there the well, proper way. Right. But if you're not putting in the work, then what's your website going to look like? It's going to look like what I want it to look like with search, not right. what somebody else's depiction is. Right. It's going to have our information. Why? Because it's not, it doesn't have to be a third party. Now, all I'm saying is I could sit back and let everyone do this. You I don't could. have to do, I don't have to do anything. Could. I could just talk about it on the show, but I don't want to because I love it. And it's what I do. So I'm telling my brother, look, it's what you do, Own man. It. Own it. Look, it's what you do. Have the Own camera it. set. Have your this hat. Have that up. Do it yourself. Learn how to use the program. It will take you a month to learn the program playing around. And then you'll have five reviews built up that you could knock out in like in like two nights. Right? Because you're now pretty much this sounds like self-help stuff, right? But at the same time, within that, now you're comfortable with it, right? Right, we're comfortable with this. Look at you. You're sitting back. You're but, like, yeah. But it is. No, I'm, I'm sitting back with my microphone. I love it. Um, no, but it is. Help yourself. You, you're no use. But you use can do to, that. You're no use to anyone else if you cannot help yourself. Exactly. I used to be a people pleaser. I was always afraid to say no. I learned how to say no 
It was the scariest thing I ever learned in my entire life. I'm 45 years old. I just recently learned how to say no. The last five years, maybe? We did a whole show when we first started about me saying no to the point where everyone got sick of me saying no to everything because I've never said no. Right. Or not. I've never said no the right way. There's a right way and a wrong way to do things. Uh, that, 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 that's up to you. But... But learning to say, learning to really help yourself first, help whoever you want do what you want to do. Save the world. All right. Because we're all here to save the world in our own way. Yes. But you got to help yourself first. Right. We talk about this all the time. You put your mask on and if you're next to the child or the person on the plane, then you can help them. If you opt to help them and they start pulling and pushing and you don't have your mask on and can't get air, you die, they die. At least, at least help yourself, save yourself. Now, let's get back to Rob because this is really important. I said to him, Rob and I, let's count banks but from Heist Click. I said, yo, um, never more relevant has our music been from 2004. I'm, no, from, 19, from 98, but to, the, to like 2011, that set of music defined everything that's going on in the last four years period. Wow. So I go back and listen to it and I'm like, well, it works for everyone. It can't just work for Frank Castle in the group for the face man. It's got to be able to work for count. It's got to be able to work for, you know, cutter. It's got to be able to work for Petro. It's got to be able to work for dirty D who's who drank and understood and went on. And she sings in multiple groups and is doing fantastic helping women with alcoholic abuse and different dysfunctions and disorders. <clears throat> so I said, remember the song we did save yourself. And he's like, yeah. I go, remember how much we love that song, right? It's all about no one's coming to save you, but you have the ability to save yourself. Like you're the epic character, no matter what happens. So when, whether you, mm, oh, well then you just, you're killing it for yourself. You actually have the power to do it. So he's like, yeah. I go, right, manifestation, right? You can do it. Now, how do you do it? Well, you put your best foot forward and you put your positive mind thing to the track. And then before you know it, you got a song that isn't whack. Like it just starts going. Right. Well, that was us manifesting on the song, the song itself, the idea itself and the pattern, which should be. Would work, I will say, on my journey and on his journey, because he was the other lyric writer. I said, now see that for what it is. Sit down and take the 30 breaths. Sit down and say to yourself, I love myself. I'm grateful. But can you guys help me perhaps? I'm ready to. I need help with this. Help I'm me. ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm just, I'm just ready. Yeah, period. That's kind of. Let me tell you something. I manifested a stalk of celery today. Okay. A stalk of celery. Now you may think, what, what, what's the big deal about a stalk of celery? It, the stalk of celery is irrelevant. I thought about. We, I was making my grocery list in my head today because Frank and I had to run to the supermarket and I, I, I didn't write it down. I had it in my head. And this morning I was like, oh, I, I need celery. I need celery. I need celery. And then, of course, I get to the supermarket and I forget that I need celery. And Frank says, hey, hon, I'm going to get some celery. And I started laughing because. I've known this man for almost three years. He's never asked for celery once in his life. <laughs> never once in his life. I got this like, intense. Hey, babe, I, I want some celery. And I was like, you know, you go for it. And I, I looked I, over I, at it and it just looked like jumped off the shelf at me. And I was like, I would like to eat that tonight or right. just have it in the house and, to eat. And for me, I was laughing in the grocery store because this man never asked for celery. Ever. <laughs> but this is how the manifestations but this is happen. It. The, the, all you have to do is think it. And you have to think it from the place of already having it, whether it's a job or a house or an apartment or a car or a new girlfriend, a new boyfriend or a baby. You have to come from the place of already having it, already owning it, already loving it, already being it. And then you ask the universe and you say, this is what I want. Let them worry about and the how. And don't challenge the universe. You worry about the All what. Right. Don't worry about the how. Yes. The how for us is if I need money, if I need money, how am I going to get it? I'm going to work for it. I'm going to borrow it. I'm going to steal it. Those are my top three ways to get money. 
I'll work for it, borrow it, or steal it. The universe doesn't care. They they worry about the how. You just have to worry about the what. Because, because the, the universe, universe sees can make that money come a billion different ways billion different that you ways can't see. That you can't see because we can only see what's in front of us. We can't see. You're limited in your options due to your awareness of the entire right. situation. And your programming, you know. So for someone else, they might not be able to work for the money. They may have to borrow it. They may have to steal it. You know, some people might not have a problem problem with stealing it at all but these are these the, we're so limited in our thoughts that this is the only way we can come up with getting money if we need money and that's just an example i mean we're talking about celery here but you know like we've manifested listen we've look, manifested in the last two it's, years it's what money it, it's a what life it is you you manifest we wanted to help people you know, right so people. i put work into myself big time yeah <clears throat> excuse me and then <clears throat> the people came they did. That needed it when I was ready, when it clicked in me because I put the work in. You it did. was like the door. The, it the was world. like someone, yeah, turn the turn the turn the turn water the on, on, yeah, yeah and just let down. it blast into the room. I was like, whoa! I wasn't expecting that. They're like, well, you weren't ready. Literally, you weren't ready. When I met Frank, he he if he could have stood on a corner and given away bowls of ayahuasca, and he with, with everyone letting everyone know this is going to change your life. People would look at him and they wouldn't want to even ask they him questions. They wouldn't even talk to me. They'd just walk they away and go, He's crazy. They wouldn't even want to know. They wouldn't want to question it, wouldn't want to talk to him. Now, I mean, we have people literally banging down the door. <laughs> and, you know, it's a beautiful thing. But you got to put the work but in. You have to put the work in. Right? Are you, yes. Now, are you using those tools that you've been provided for in this life? Whatever they are. Whatever they are. Whatever to, they are. Now we're not talking about Aya. We're just talking about setting intention. Setting set intention and intention. manifesting. You ask the universe for what you want, but you have to come from it with a place of already having it. You have to believe that it is so. You can't say, I want this, oh, but in the back of your head, you don't believe you're worthy of having this or doing that or being with this person. You know, you have to come from a place of, of 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 ha of feeling that you already have it. Well, I I do it without. Um, I just do it in gratitude. Yeah. Right, and then <clears throat> when you're like, oh, it's a beautiful day. I'm really thankful that I got to witness this part of the day. Like I'm here outside. Oh, we did. When I yeah. do it in that, and then I go, I just go back outside every once in a while, and I sit in that thought, like, oh, it's a beautiful day. Whatever I try to manifest coming to me when that's going on at that moment. At, at those moments because that's when I that's when I sent it out and then I make sure like I check myself it's like checking an email but if you wait too long sometimes it'll um, come off the screen and you won't see it it'll just say you have one and you won't know what it is you, you don't go search it yeah, yeah you don't pay attention to it it Life gets lost in the program Frank was sitting out this morning and he was I was talking to Nick on an, we're on Facebook we we're texting each other and I looked up yeah, and, and, and he looked up, and there were birds, little sparrows surrounding him. And I'm looking out the window, and, and I'm amazed because this bird was coming close to jumping on Frank's finger. And I thought it would have been the most beautiful thing that could have happened. And When I looked up, I was shocked. I, I was talking to Nick, and I was smiling. I looked up at the sun, and then I just heard a tweet. And there, there was like eight of them, mm -hmm. like right on – I was sitting next to the fence – Nick knows exactly what I'm talking about. I was like three feet from the fence and they were, it was, they were all on the fence. And then one of them looked like it was going to just jump on me. And I was like, Oh, what's up little hot family. But once again, all right, I was grounding while I was speaking to my friend about writing for the fearless page and how much work has been coming out of me. It's almost like a book. It's like a novel, a short story is just built around just the characters. I'm only on six characters. I'm at like 60 pages. I don't even know what's going on, but it's fantastic. And boom, there's the birds. They're just there with you all of a sudden. And I'm like, wait, what? And it's like, dude, you're in the moment, in the now, doing beautiful things, creating. This is the number one thing they want you doing is creating. Creating and feeling no good and loving yourself and stuff. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. I bought a coloring book, an Avengers coloring book. I got 24 crayons. I'm, a, I'm 43 years old. It calms me down I didn't know and makes right it now. makes me feel so good. And I'm like meditating. I'm not 
really paying attention to what I'm doing, but I am. I'm just like kind of going around the lines and then like shading magic. and then going, I remember that color of this and then blah, 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 blah. that's keeping me in a frame of mind the same way as when I say, oh, what a beautiful day it is outside. Because while you're it's doing a creative. That, you're not thinking of anything else at that moment. You're right. living in the moment and doing something in the now. Right, you're right, right. not thinking about anything else. I noticed that things chop. This is why when I was an inspector and I would count blueberries, and people make fun of me, but I would have to count thousands of blueberries. It makes no sense, right? But if I told you how it's done, you'd be like, oh, thankfully Frank was there to do that. But um, in, in the counting, there's this silence of just the numbers in you. Right. And you're, you're not counting a few boxes. You're counting 100 boxes per inspection. You're doing 12 inspections a day. You're doing so many that it's insane. There's this silence, and then time slows. It doesn't. You well, you can you're like counting, and yes, it's like a. I was gonna get at this. Yeah, it's like, like a, a mantra. mantra. And as you're like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, then all of a sudden you step out of that while yeah. that's happening, and you're like, oh. Well, I have something to do today, and I couldn't get my mind straight on it. And I, or for me, it was a rap song, right? And I couldn't, I couldn't find the lyrics. They'd come to me during while I was counting one, two, three, four. I, and I'd have to stop and go because it's I can't count like that today. It's got to be one, two, 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 three, 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 four. And they're like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Well, each one of those it adds up to 16. Don't worry about it. I know exactly what I'm doing, folks." And I would start writing raps while I was counting blueberries <laughs> because you find the internal rhythm and you create and those raps were the things that came out in my world with what I did and who I did them and from, I broke the mold. I broke the mold from, oh, what is this kid doing here to, oh, dude, you're opening for me. You and your boy, you're in. You're in. How many of you are there? Are there more of you? I only, my only wish was that more of us would have been around for those later moments, but I don't think it was meant for that. It was meant for me to see. Because other people became parents, they didn't become fearless. Uh, I I agree with that. They went on that journey and that. had to see that and go. I'm. I used to hang out with everyone, all the top people in the world, whatever famous people, and they would be like, "What do you What do you do? You should be chilling with us here because you're you're actually like us." I'm like, "I'm nothing like any of you." What it is that I am is I'm outgoing and I'm personable. Yeah. I just. I have such personality. Yes. Um, I would be, if anything, more on the comedian side and I would stay on the rap side because I notice comedians and rappers, even though we're all different, we're all very much the same. Actors kind of go blank, right? They like lose personality to gain another personality inside of that. Well, if you're a fake rapper, you fake the funk, but the real guys, they don't ever lose themselves. They become more of them, like a Tupac. Like, you know, you become more of the persona and I, that, that fit me. I watch, I watch comedians and they're like our philosophers of the now. They are. They're the uncensored, I, I, I believe that the, uncensored voice of the world. That they are. I, I believe that. I believe that. It's that's the consciousness the looking back. chosen prior to coming to this planet. Oh, you have to. Because mm -hmm. not anyone could do that. You know, they're pulling it right out of the ether with some of those jokes, you know, and they're laughing at the things that. Everyone's in the street that they're raging over that make no sense. You, just, you don't even something. have to be angry about that. You can just shut that out of your mind and never let it bother you and continue about your day and not get sick about it. If it wasn't for my sense of humor, I'm not a comedian, but I am very funny at all. Um, if it wasn't for my sense of humor, I wouldn't have been able to get through my life. Because if I can't make fun of it. We have sessions in this house. Yeah. That will make you cry and run for the hills if you don't have a sense of humor attached to you. But if we don't have that sense of humor, especially Paul, this, <laughs> this whole thing would be crazy. <laughs> but, oh, is that the commercial? Is that the end of the show? It's never truly over. We'll always be here with you. Remember, wherever you are, make it TFR. And stick around because Chris and Sheree are up next with Beyond the Veil.